Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. The 2021 Summer Suffolk Gathering was held at the Ashtabula Fairgrounds in Jefferson, Ohio at the end of June. Suffolk owners from many states got together to talk about how to promote the rare draft horse breed, share information about their breeding operations, and show off their horses. The fierce heat forced them to cancel some of their planned events, but they still put on a variety of activities, including an obstacle course, a best foot class, and some pleasure driving in the field out back. They also took to the streets to visit a local nursing home where they treated the residents there to a private viewing of these horses in harness. We visited with some of the folks at the event. Uh, my name is Clifford Cox. I live in Saluda, North Carolina. Um, I've been involved with Suffolk Punch Horses for 25 years. I bought my first team of uh, Geldens. Uh, it was really hard to find horses at that time, uh, Suffolk horses. Um, there was only one stallion I knew of um, in the southeast, and that was uh, staying on by Jason Rutledge. Um, and then over the past 25 years from promotion, uh, field days and public events, uh, exposure of the Suffolk horse to the public, um, bringing in new membership like Pete Millette. Um, we have grown in the Southeast. Uh, we have a group called the Southern Suffolk Gathering Group. That's a nonprofit. We had two events in Dublin, Virginia in 2019 and 2018. And, um, was called the Suffolk Spectacular. Um, we had over 35 Suffolk horses there and probably way over 100 people uh, that were involved with the Suffolk Punch uh, horse. At Royal Heritage did a real good coverage on that and helps us promote this horse. Um, there's probably in the southeast now, we, we've been trying to count up, there's probably at least um, 12 or more working stallions our growth uh, in the uh, membership and in our association is growing uh, rapidly in the southeast uh, because of promotion and also work like Jason Rutledge does with the Hill and Harvest Foundation. Um, so we, um, we feel really good about our future of our horse and bringing in new and younger membership and um, promotion. Uh, we feel that Rural Heritage is one of our best advocates to uh, bring this horse into the future and uh, preserve uh, this great workhorse. And he's been kept to the original horse that he um, was developed for in England. And um, he hadn't been influenced as far as his uh, uh, work ethics and body makeup. And uh, so that's why we like the Suffolk Punch Horse. My name is Pete Millett. I uh, live in Marshall, North Carolina, which is in the mountains of um, Western North Carolina. I, I have had experience with other horses and realized that this uh, this is kind of a good all-around purpose horse, for, and especially for what we're doing. Uh, we do a lot of work in the woods, although they're good for just about any other aspect of uh, draft horse experience. Uh, but um, 
they are uh, strong but fairly uh, compact and uh, can get around easily in the woods and um, they've got a great attitude they're very um, uh, they're gentle and have uh, they don't get excited not flighty at all uh, and um, I have two mares that I, uh, with the influence of Clifford here and uh, others like Jason Rutledge and uh, some of the other uh, Suffolk owners, Chad Miano and others, uh, have been able to get two full sisters that are uh, real solid and they're coming along. Um, they are easy keepers. They are very healthy. They have great feet. Um, they uh, don't, uh, as opposed to some of the bigger breeds, uh, they don't uh, consume a lot of feed and um, they're just great, um, great all around horse. I've noticed sometimes when they, if there's something that might startle them, they are alert, but they don't completely fall apart. They realize what it is and, and, and uh, maintain composure. <laughs> they're smart. If that's, they're very smart. And uh, um, that across the board is pretty much the case. I don't, can't think of any of them that I've seen that are, you know, absolutely wild or anything like that. So I've been very pleased and have been fortunate enough through uh, mentors and um, uh, experienced horse owners uh, to end up with a very good team. And I'm looking forward to using them <laughs> in the future and breeding them. I think there's also, uh, as Clifford said, there's we have uh, a variety of choice. Uh, and can uh, produce more and um, uh, better uh, horses in the future. Well, I'd like Did to you? put a plug in for you because that uh, uh, rural heritage is uh, through the calendars and the magazine and the uh, TV episodes. It's uh, inspiring and also uh, you can learn a lot from uh, all the different different breeds also uh, of. Uh, uh, draft animals but um it's it's been good for us and um, keep up the good work <laughs> i appreciate that that's kind of you thank you very much If you enjoy seeing how our ancestors lived during America's rural yesterday, you're going to love looking at these books. Volume 1 is fieldwork showing horses and vintage tractors preparing seed beds, planting, cultivating, and harvesting the crop. Volume 2 shows the work being done in the barn and farmyard, feeding and watering the livestock, getting the crop into the barn, milking the cows, shearing the sheep, and collecting the eggs. In Volume 3, we go inside the home to see the family in the kitchen canning vegetables, in the parlor listening to the radio, and in the dining room for family supper. We also head into town to shop at the general store or visit on the town square on Saturday night. Each book has over 140 large format pages. They sell for $24.95 each, or you can buy two for $44.95, or all three for $54.95 plus shipping. Call 1-877-647-2452 to order. That's 1-877-647-2452. Uh, my name's John Hammond. I live in Cornish, New Hampshire. Uh, I'm a farrier. Uh, I started in 1976 
and uh, I've been a Suffolk breeder since 1985. Um, they asked me to uh, take a look at the uh, foot class, which the Suffolks always do. Um, it's just one man's opinion, <laughs> which doesn't always jibe with other people's opinion. Uh, but I, uh, I like to see a, a, a nice clean foot uh, devoid of cracks or uh, splits, a uh, nice wide heel, a uh, good hoof head. Uh, I also, I think you have to uh, uh, take a look at the conformation of a horse uh, because if a horse is towed in or towed out, Lots of times what that will do is uh, dictate how the foot grows because of the, the weight bearing on it. Uh, the other thing I do is uh, if a horse is shod versus a horse that's barefoot, uh, that has an effect. And also if, if I get to the point where there's two horses that are uh, the same, judged the same as far as the score in my mind. Uh, I feel a, a horse that's older uh, should Go should up. be placed above because he's or he or she is older and, and uh, is holding up better. Uh, it's hard to uh, uh, take a, a foal or a yearling and put it against a horse that's uh, say four or five years old just because they're they're young and they're still developing. Uh, we didn't uh, look at movement or anything like that but I, I like to see a horse that's, that's balanced, uh, stands nice and square, uh, isn't towed in or towed out and uh, has a nice uh, foot that will hold up. Uh, and there really wasn't any uh, uh, feet that I looked at today that I would call um, poor. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, no significant cracks. There was a couple horses that their feet were shod, but they were due for shoeing again. And uh, that's not a bad thing. It's just that when you look at them, uh, it, you take it, that into account. It, well, it shows up in in. Uh, how they're standing. I shoe a lot of draft horses uh, up in northern New England. There's still a lot of people that, that uh, have draft horses that are using them in the woods mm -hmm. uh, or doing livery, livery work. Um, so a lot of Pertrins and Belgians you're shoeing plus uh, the feathered horses too? Uh, yeah, I would say the, the, the well, uh, a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. um, uh, being a Suffolk breeder, I, I see probably more Suffolks than a lot of people do. Uh, but uh, Belgians and Pertrins, probably more Belgians than anything. But, uh, you know, I work on some Shires and some Clydes and basically all the major breeds. And uh, uh, there's differences between them. I think that some. Uh, some breeds, their their feet are a little bit different. Uh, right. Like uh, the Shires, my experience with Shires or Clydes, they tend to have a, a wider foot, uh, a little more flair. Uh, a lot of it depends on what you're using the horses for and uh, what type of work dictates what kind of shoe you put on. Um, I, I used to shoe a lot of pulling horses and uh, I've shod you know, six horse hitches with scotch bottoms and, but most of the horses I work on are uh, farm horses. Right. Uh, they're, you know, they're getting firewood out. They're, uh, uh, maple syrup is a, a, a crop that a lot of people have in the spring. And uh, there's still a lot of people that still use their horses to gather sap. There's, there's, there's quite a few people that uh, don't shoe their horses, uh, but um, where I am, it's, it's pretty hilly, and uh, you know, you need traction going uphill, and you need some traction to hold back a load. Uh, 
So um, I would say that probably two thirds of the horses that are working in the winter time get shoes. I probably do more uh, draft horse shoeing in the winter than I do in the summer. Uh, most of the people that are, unless they're logging with them, most of them are working them barefoot if they're haying, that sort of thing. Right. Or yep. plowing in the spring. Yep. Yeah. You got plenty of work? Oh, Staying God. busy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, I, uh, I run out of steam a little quicker than I used to. Sure. Uh, and sure. they seem to be a little heavier than they used to be. Sure. But, uh, sure. Uh, it's, uh, I, I feel really fortunate to be able to have a, uh, vocation that I enjoy and I never gotten tired of doing it and yeah. uh, and I'm, I've met some just wonderful people dealing with a customer is uh, really a, a, a big part of the business because knowing uh, how because they're all different and right. they all have different priorities and uh, I try and gather as much information as I can from them and then let them make the final decision because they're paying the bill, not me. I'll yeah. do whatever they want me to do, but I can uh, guide them, but ultimately it's their choice on, on how they want to do it and that sort of thing. Uh, I, uh, uh, I have two or three sets of stocks yeah. that uh, I, different people have horses and I, you know, I used to, I'm not the person I used to think I was. <laughs> okay, I understand. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I uh, years ago I used to use ropes and that sort of thing. And, and the bottom line is it can be dangerous and it doesn't pay to get hurt because Absolutely. you can't do anything. So I, uh, uh, I like uh, to use stocks. If a horse doesn't want to have its feet handled, you can do a better job. Absolutely. And uh, some people are pretty uh, uncomfortable thinking that their Abusive. horse might might get hurt in the stocks, but I always say, uh, you know, can you pick up their feet? Right. And, uh, you know, if they can't pick up their feet, then I can't really do a good job. I, I would uh, probably, uh, to just uh, have make a generalization, uh, I would say that the Suffolk, in my opinion, probably overall has the best quality foot as compared to the Percherons or Belgians. Now there are some that individuals. Have individuals that aren't, but as a general rule, I think the Suffolk breed has really focused on uh, feet and... Uh, and confirmation yeah, and the yeah, slope of the hoof. Yeah. And, and the, the saying, no foot, no horse, really rings true. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at ruralheritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. My name is Dominic Button. I have been raised around Suffolk horses since I was, you know, two or three years old at my grandparents' house, and they've had Suffolk since the 80s. And so I've been working with them and driving them and learning about them since I was born on their farm. And what do you like about working with Suffolk horses? I, I love their temperament and their ease of use and their willingness to work. And they're, they're great for the young farmer. Um, to get into because they're just they're just so willing to work with you and they're they're so versatile in everything you can do on the farm and for a young farmer that's you know maybe on a budget and you can, can wants to work with horses but can only have so many being able to do everything you want to do with them is a big value and you were talking to me a little bit about what your hopes and plans are for in the future can you talk about that a little bit yeah so my parents are now looking to you know get back into farming and get some land and hopefully eventually we can move those Suffolk from my grandparents house in New York to their house and um, we can get back to using them like they should be and get more use out of them get some more air time for them hopefully on these outlets and uh, yeah it'll be really great to get back to working with them.
Thanks for joining us today at Rural Heritage and RFD TV, where we borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.